Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Working Horses with Jim. Hi, everybody. We are headed down to Tupper Lake um, to a sawmill. The sawmill where Jim is, the logs that he's getting out at Paul Smith's are going. And um, Jim called the owner of the sawmill yesterday, and um, he knew the weather was going to be bad, and as you can see, it is. It's probably not a great time for us to be heading out, especially down to snow country, but Jim knew that he couldn't, it wouldn't, wasn't a great day to log, so he decided that we could do this instead. We wanted to share with you um, just a different sawmill than what Jim has and just show you where the logs are going. What is, what do you know about this, Jim? Well, we'll talk about that when we get to the sawmill, but um, it's interesting because the forecast right today is we're actually supposed to get more snow down here in the lower country than up there in the higher country. So maybe we'll be going into uh, um, maybe we'll be going into an area where there's actually less snow than more. Yeah, we got a lot of rain overnight, and then we're it's snowing now. And here's Abby's house. So, anyways, um, come on along with us today. We hope you enjoy doing something a little bit different and um, stay tuned. So here we are, Tupper Lake Hardwoods. But they're not doing hardwood anymore, they're just doing pine, so. That's never been here before, so we're gonna have to figure out where to go and where to park. It's been kind of a snowy Put ride. logs out there. Yeah, it's been a snowy ride down here. Look at all the lumber. Oh my goodness. Wow. It'd be interesting to find on, out what's going on in the lumber field. Wow. Hope I can park right here without being in somebody's way. So here we are at, at Tupper Lake, the sawmill. And this is Chris, and he is, what's your? General manager. You're the general manager here, yep. okay. Um, and uh, here we have uh, the... Uh, My name is Bridget. Uh, I'm the office manager. Okay. And she was just going over, she's got some pictures back here of, of her grandfather. She's been in this area for a long time and she was just talking about grandfather or father? Grandfather. Grandfather, yes. Mm -hmm. So they have some great pictures here. So um, horse logging goes back a long ways, even in this area. But I'm sure a lot of people did a lot of horse logging in this area years ago. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So Before the skitters. Yes. And Tupper Lake is huge wood product stuff. Yes. Yes. It has been for years. Has been and uh, still hanging on. Yes. Yes. Um, so, my logs that I've been cutting at Postmas College are coming up here and as we drove in we saw a huge pile of logs and we'll go out at some point here and just show more of those, that pile of logs. And lumber too, a lot of lumber. Lots of both. Yes, I see that. So. Um, it is the season. We'll let you kind of explain things as you go along. I know it's noisy out there so we won't be able to Yep. Do a lot of talking out there, um, but even as we walk through, we can just show things and then sure. um, we'll talk whenever we can. That's why I tell most people if, uh, you know, I'd give you a quick explanation of the, our process here and then, uh, you know, keep the questions in your head and then when we get the quieter. That's a good idea. Quieter stages of the game, yep. then we can. Uh, so why don't you do that? That's perfect. Absolutely. Yep. Well, to start off with, um, this is Tupper Lake Hardwoods. Ironically, uh, the name Hardwoods, we no longer cut hardwoods. We cut hardwoods for about 28 years. Um, now we've been bought out by the Matra Group. It's a pine company in Quebec. They make windows and door pieces, mostly finger joint and moldings. And um, They bought this last December, so it's just about a year anniversary that we've been here sawing pine. Uh, just tell you a little bit about the process, um, how it happens or how it works. Like you said, you uh, you harvest the logs in the forest. We buy the logs as they come in from contractors, logging contractors, big and small. The logs will come in, we grade and scale them ourselves, and that's how we pay the contractor. Okay, after the logs are decked or piled, the logs will come into the mill for the sawing process. The first thing they do is they'll go through a metal detector okay. or scan for any metal or you know nails, 
spikes, whatever I had, what have you. They clear that process, they'll go into a debarker. It's a roster head debarker. What that machine does is it basically will beat the bark off the logs. Um, after it goes through the debarker, the logs will then go to a primary breakdown, which is our head saw. Our head saw is a 12 inch double cut band saw, which means being double cut, it cuts, the carriage will go and it back and forth and it cuts both directions. Mm -hmm. So after the, the primary breakdown and the head saw, the cants or blocks, uh, various dimensions depending on what we're sawing, will go to a gang saw. Good. After they, when they go to the gang saw, it's basically a set of circle saws, stacked, guided and stacked, one shot, it'll make the, uh, the secondary breakdown, breaking it into four. The flitches off the saw, well, the pieces, or flitches, they're called, mm -hmm. will come off the saw, they go to an edger. The three saw edger, uh, the same time that we've been using for 100 years, um, that's where you'll make the square edgers. After that lumber's process, it'll go on an outfeed table to a trim line. The trim line is a Canadian style trimmer, which means there's a saw on each end. But as you'll see, one end of the board gets cut on one side of the mill. The board will travel down the line, go across as it gets graded and tallied and trimmed on the other end. After that, it goes outside, it's separated by dimension and grade, and it's stacked for um, stack and second for drying purposes. Okay. Okay. You have no kilns here? No. Okay. All of our all of our drying and secondary processing occurs in Canada. Okay. We were just talking about that earlier saying maybe we could take a trip up to Canada and see the, the next process of this. We actually have a pretty, uh, our parent company has a pretty neat uh, corporate video. Uh, oh really? Basically shows what they, uh, do with it, okay. move the lumber okay. after it gets there. So okay. uh, maybe yeah. we can maybe we can find that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we'll uh, we'll we'll go in. Like I said, uh, very noisy. You can communicate, but uh, we'll start off by the debarker. Um, I don't know, Jim. Did you want to go actually into the Sawyer's cab? Love to. And uh, you know, see yeah. you know, some of that breakdown from there. As a sawmill operator myself, when if I was to buy a log, which I very, very seldom do, I actually want to scale it accurately and fairly, but I also would generally get an overrun on my with the log form to the lumber form. Yes. Do you, you expect that also? I'm assuming yes, to a degree. To a degree, because when we buy the logs, we buy it on international quartering scale. Yep. International quartering scale will develop for a saw curve, for thickness of the blade, at a quarter of an inch. Which was the old circle size. Exactly. Our bandsaw blade yep. is about 316. So, Obviously, we're not making as much sawdust as a quarter inch dirt wood, right. so you should gain every saw line. You should gain a little bit of wood, and and with the small band saws like myself, that's an eighth inch, so that's even better. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so you went to Paul Smith's College. I did. Okay, and and you graduated in. You graduated in ninety three. Ninety three. We have. Um, our daughter-in-law's father went to Paul Smith's and is a, and he just retired, but he's a he was a, a saw, Sawyer. Yeah, for years and years. In this business, you see uh, the spinnies are everywhere. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Um, before we get going into the noise and all, um, how, what, how many employees do you have here? I just walked through this a lot. Yeah, well, we. We employ about, uh, I'm going to say it's about 23 right now. 23. Yeah. Uh, but when you, you'll see as we go to the mill, it takes 23 people to run the whole operation. Okay. But it only takes about, let's see, two, four, seven guys to make all of them.
So as we go throughout this summit, I will try to talk over a little bit to explain what's going on right here. Of course, is the debarker. And off to our right, you can barely see it, but there's a green cage that the operator stays in to operate this debarker. will be going to camp meaning that big chunk of wood is, is going to be going to the reef side. The gang side. The gang side, yes. Right. Yeah, okay. Now when you have a really, do you ever finish it on the head saw, everything goes to the gang saw. We can, we can finish can, it on the, but yes. do you generally, or you generally, everything goes to the gang saw? Yes. Okay. And what size is it normally? We, we'll do five inch cans, six inch cans, eight inch, whatever, okay. whatever uh, the, Whatever the breakdown gives you. Yep. Another picture of a horse back here. <laughs> Whose horse is that? Whose horse is that, Rob? So you've got, you have some history of horse logging. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, all he did his entire life. Wow. And I don't know if you know, but that's what I do also. I've seen your videos. Have yeah, you? I'm, yeah, I'm we're watch, watching some last night. Great. I, I really enjoy it. Been doing it for many years. That's great. And now I'm able to teach a little bit at Pospis College so that some of the kids might, who knows? Oh yeah, that's terrific. I'll stick the cotton lumber. I'll stick the cotton lumber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just the opposite because I have a mill set up really nice. I could do quite well in the mill. Yeah. I, I prefer logging. Got them both. It's all, it's it's all work. work. It's, it's all work. work. Yep. Even sitting here, I bet you're tired at the end of the day. It is. It's not. It's not. Physically draining is more mentally yes, draining. Yes, I could see how it would be. Especially when you have people standing over your shoulders watching you. Oh, it's uh, actually it's a nice... Uh, nice change? Nice change, yeah. <laughs> Keep awake. That's it. 
Okay. Guess we go on. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. So here we are at the Yedger, and this young man was doing a great job. He was staying quite busy pushing boards through the Yedger. And the Yedger, what it does is it takes the rough edges off so it's too, you know, the, the edges are all squared up. This edger is quite a bit different than mine. As you can see, he has a, a board to his left that controls what goes on. Brenda was commenting that how nice it was they have two laser lights on this edger. On ours, we only have one laser light. She does do the edging at times, so she would have really appreciate that second light. If you notice also, they have stoppers here that you can control with his feet to stop these boards from coming onto the edger until he's ready. On this board right here, he had a little bit of issues with it. And as you can see, he has the ability to control the speed of the edger. And he sets it slow, then he goes fast with it. This board that he's about to edge right here is actually 16 feet long. And that I'm pretty sure is about the longest board that they can, that they have room here to deal with to put through the edger. This is just a shaker that gets the edging, small edging pieces to go down into the track that takes them down to the chipper. And here we are crossing the green chain to get across to the other side.
underneath the sawmill is a series of conveyors that will take all of the um, small pieces of wood and just junk stuff that needs to be go taken to the chipper that will transfer it there. So here we are at the gang saw and this is where the big cants come through and the operator will slide the cants over into place and line them up with the gang saw and they will cut, be cut into a whole bunch of pieces in one pass. So here we are at the trim saw or the cutoff saw. So how this works is the, the saw is in that yellow shield across the way and that will cut off the one end of the, of the board and then it continues on down through to the other operator and he has control of this end of the board and his cutoff saw is actually down at the end of the track but uh, he, both these guys, I'm sure, know how to grade this lumber in such a way to, to cut it off at the right spot. And as you can see, these boards transfer from one side to another with these rollers right here. I can see quite a lot of red rot in these boards, so I'm sure they're graded out into some other product and the operators have the ability to control the chains so they can stop them whenever they want to be able to fix any problems that they have So here down below is the chipper that chips up all the wood that's good for nothing else and blows it into a trailer. Our chipper knife, our gang saw blade. Oh, the chipper knife. Okay. Do you do that too? We'll come show you. My goodness. Here's one coming. This, this is coming in, getting ready to get the sweet sharpened. What? 
is that a one person job to put this like this? Or is that two people? I mean, to, to pull that over like that, is that just a one person job or two? One guy can do it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Very uh, carefully. carefully. <laughs> yes. Can I touch that or that? Yeah, go ahead. That's really sharp. That had any speed on it at all? That's a dull one. That's a dull one. Really? That's very sharp. <laughs> AAR. When they bite you, you bleed. Not bad. This is where the magic comes. This is where we sharpen the bandsaws. The process when they come in, uh, they're basically they're leveled, which is flattening, flattening them. Okay. Tensioning them. Okay. It, basically, what you do when you put tension into a blade is when you stretch it on the bandsaw. Okay. You put strain in the bandsaw. Yeah. That's what keeps the blade cutting straight. Okay. Make a you know long story short. Uh, these are all machines that are part of the process. This is a manual bench. This is a auto bench. Same. Same thing, just manual. Hundred model. years ago. Yeah. Okay. Today. Okay. I mean, the guys still do it that way today, also. Okay. Now, has this mill always been a bandsaw? Was it ever started as a circle mill? No. It's always been. We a were always a bandsaw. Okay. And uh, a lot of people, I, I guess, kind of one of the bigger questions people will ask is, you know, what do you have for tips on the saws? Um, just like your. Your, your wood miser blades, I'm sure that they're they're offset. The teeth are offset yep. to make your curve. Yep. These ones are actually called they're swedged, and you actually use the steel of the saw, the body of the saw, to make the two. There's a, a machine. If you can get down like this, you can see the tooth. Um, so, I said basically the tooth itself is made out of, the, the cutting part of the tooth is made out of the steel of the bandsaw. Right. But that's the same way as on a small bandsaw. Yes. And you set them back and forth. Yep. And that's what you're doing here, correct? Nope. No. These are, like I said, they're swedged, so that's what gives you your curve, and they're, they're all in line. Okay. Okay, that is different then. Yeah. Yep. So are these saying, this is probably a stupid question, but... That's from the, the actual swedger. That's the little indent that it makes when it does the process. Okay. And I asked you this earlier when it was too noisy. Um, the length of this, these bandsaws are is what? 38 and a half feet. 38 and a half feet, wow. Yep, 12 inches wide. So the actual sharpening process is? This is the sharpening. This right here? Yep. Okay. Kind of interesting too, the, the, the grinder, this is the grinder that we use if you were to go into a museum from a hundred years ago, they're basically the same exact thing. Really? Yep. Pretty, uh, pretty neat that. Uh, but a hundred years ago, how would they have powered it? Good question. Steve. I'd say a hundred, maybe. <laughs> yeah. It, I bet you're close to it. These have been around. I mean, oh, yeah. back, oh, especially yeah. out west. Yep. Um, they had no good question. Stuff. How did they power? Right? Yeah. Hey Frank, how did they power? How did they power grinders 150 years ago? Can't talk. Fly shaft. <laughs> what, what was it? Uh, line shaft. Line shaft? Yes. But run off what? Uh, like a hydro. Just trying to think steam back. Steam water wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe water wheel or, or steam before diesel came out. Yep. Yeah. They did it. Like yeah. the, uh, the rocker head assembly. Like the rocker head assembly. Yeah. Is identical to ones built in like uh, 1905. Really? Yeah. 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 There's one right at the Blue Mountain Lake Museum. Okay. That literally, you'd look at it and you would swear it's the same machine. Okay. Well, when something works good, yeah. Why it, change why it? Why change it? Exactly. exactly. Just like I said, this machine, guys are using this this same bench. Yeah. That they were using 100 years ago. Yeah. This is automated just for the basically. Uh, the automation part takes the job out of the hands of the okay. filer. Got the time to do something. They just, but they just, even your men still do a lot on that particular one. They, we use both. Both, both. Okay. Yep. This is a tried and true method. Yes. Yes. So how often do you have to 
Okay. Change the blade. Every six hours. Oh, every six hours. Oh, really? Waiting for that question everybody always asks. Okay. Uh, About every six hours. Huh. And, and here's another question. How long do they last? Six hours. No, no. There's six no, hours. You don't, you, no. Then you sharpen them. No, it's, you got to resharpen them. Exactly. But how um, long? I, I'm sure it varies. It, it well, does. You were talking about your bandsaw yes. yesterday. How long will it take? I've seen a bandsaw last 30 seconds. I've seen them last 30 days. <laughs> Those 30 second blades, that's kind of a, a high price day for you guys. Yeah. Wow. But um, you get all the metal and everything out of it and the dirt off of it. So it would seem like it would be pretty much... No there's, guarantees. There's no guarantees. The um, Paul Smith logs, I don't, I don't think it was stuff you're talking about. I think it was on the, the Jones Pound, yes. Jones Pond yes. outlet. They said they were cutting up the Somewhere in that forest once upon a time there was a power line and guess what we found it. really this year yep oh my goodness there was a power line a power line because we found the insulators oh. and, and it was nothing that it wasn't a power line from 20 years ago right, because right. it was you know that deep yeah. so it was once upon a time but uh, nothing caught it and yeah. the bandsaw always will but you caught it yes uh-huh so that was yeah was expensive yeah. day I had a tree that I, I cut year, uh, quite a few years ago off a guy's property, off his front lawn, yeah. and 13 nails. It was uh, a huge tree. It was one of those trees, I could hardly get it back off the mill. Well, I gotta be done with the nails, so I cut, and I cut, yep. hit another nail. 13 nails in one log. People always ask, they say, do you want this tree? But it's a beautiful tree, you know, it was in the backyard. And you can have it for free. No, it's gonna it, cost it, me too much money. No, but they'll say, I'll say, no, it's, no, no thank you, it has nails in it. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. I said, were you there exactly. 20 years I've ago heard the when same that story. started? Yes. I said, some kid somewhere yes. decided to grab a hammer and a nail yes. and was going to do, you know, clotheslines, bird feeders, you mm -hmm. name it. They, I, cut, I cut a cedar tree, nice big cedar tree, and way out in the woods, the guy said he brought it from. And yet, as I cut in quite a ways, there was nails in there, and it was obviously a ladder tree, tree stand. stand. Yep. And right on up through. Oh yeah. And it's way out in the woods. Three stands are, are obvious because they're here, here, mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, a chainsaw files. Years ago, we always right. just, just take a chainsaw files. Yep. Stupid. We've hit them. We've hit, files, yep. we've hit round files. We've hit flat files. We've hit taps. We've and hit, the files are hard. We used to have. A, I don't even know where it was. We moved filing rooms. It used to be over there, but we had basically a collection of uh, stuff you hit. Of stuff that yes. we've hit over the years. Yeah. It was pretty. Uh, yeah. Interesting and expensive at the same time, but yeah. you know, you hit all kinds of things. Yes. We yeah. never found the musket like some people found in Massachusetts, <laughs> but some interesting things. Or no fancy arrowheads. No. <laughs> so. uh, what happens when you hit something pretty big with metal with this blade? Like, does it stop it dead? Sure. Or? It, won't, it, won't, it won't stop the rotation, but it will stop it from cutting. It'll yeah, it Basically, it'll clean the teeth right off, and then it's scrap metal after that. Okay. One more question. How long does it take to change a blade? About 15 minutes. So your men are just sitting around for that 15 minutes? No, they're picking up a broom. Oh, cleaning stuff. Yeah. 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 There's always work in the sawmill. Oh, though. yeah. There's Sometimes hard to get them to go do it, but there's yeah. always work to do. Yeah. And one other question here, we've got some questions. How long does it take to sharpen a blade? The whole process of setting it and, and all that stuff. If everything, you know, just... Uh, the, the routine maintenance, yes. let's call it. Um, this process from in the door, back out, three hours. For one blade? Yep. Wow, that's considerably more, more than I expected. And that's if everything is going go smooth. Yeah. Wow. Um, I think that's pretty well it, isn't it? So, let's finish it up here, if you don't mind me walking around, us walking around just Absolutely, a little bit no. to show, show the yard and the logs. Yep. It looks like quite a pile of logs out there. I don't think we've got there's a, about a million and a half board feet okay. of logs right now. Oh, wow. Oh. And I didn't bring all those. No, no. <laughs> we need a couple more horses. Yes. <laughs> well, I thank you so much for allowing us to, to, to give us this tour. No. Um, we are going to take a quick uh, walk outside to see the logs and the lumber before we go. But uh, um, Chris has to get back to work. We've held him up long enough. Yep. So anyways, I thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. this. And... Uh, I will be
bringing more logs in. As a matter of fact, I think I saw Eric this morning. He was in here this morning. I think I saw him leaving. I, so. Yeah, I, I called him and I called him just to to talk about something else, but I was going to tell him, so, you know, stay off the roads, and then I look outside and he's pulling in. So. Yeah, and there's two or three loads, I think, up there he'd be hauling. Yep. So he might be coming back with another load. I think it was th those logs because yes. they had... He said he was coming to uh, go and truck them on Friday if he possibly could. Yep. Anyways, um, that's good. We'll go check out the logs and we'll be done. We'll get out of your hair. Very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, we... We could just give you guys a really quick tour. We gotta be careful because there's too much traffic and activity, so we gotta stay out of everybody's way. But we're just gonna be a real quick tour of what's going on. Off to our left is just where the guys are stacking the lumber and sticking it up. And that will probably all come out outside, I'm guessing, because as you can see, there's lumber all over the place. They're actually loading up a trailer right now to head to Canada. And I'm sure this is an ongoing thing day after day. So let's swing over. What I wanted to show you mostly was the, the log yard and the amount of logs that there's in here. I think uh, Chris had said over a million board feet. Uh, does all the lumber from here go to the same place up there? Uh, I believe so, yes. So this is really nice because off here where they're stacking all this lumber, they're protected from, from the weather quite a bit. And all these, all these are on roller tracks or skids of some sort. Oh, here's a skid right here. So they just put them on skids and slide them right out and then push them right back in again. And as they, after they slide them out into the open, the forks from the payloaders can scoop them right up and take them out. Off to our right is the huge pile of logs. There's a, a loader truck out there doing some um, stacking or something. Um, but yeah, it's... It's huge. So your logs are, some of your logs are out there somewhere. Yes. As a matter of fact, like we'd said, my truck had just come in with a load of my logs. And that may be what that loader guy over there is working on. And I expect him to even come in with another load, uh, even, in, even in this grubby weather with bad traffic, um, bad traveling. So I think this has been a great visit, probably kind of a long video, but uh, if you we enjoyed this video uh, give it a thumbs up and also um, one other thing uh, so often we've had people complain or realize that they've missed a video here and there and so I don't like to promote this that much but if you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell then you'll be notified every time a new video comes out and they'll keep you um, updated and you know where we're at and the other thing we need to talk about probably no, not. I think that's it think okay that's I'm gonna take Brenda out to lunch you guys have a great day.